People's Tribunal has called for investigations into government uh, that had links with the apartheid regime. Leading the five-day hearings at Constitutional Hill in Johannesburg, Justice uh, Zach Jakub says that there was an abysmal failure to investigate and prosecute these crimes. The 1999 arms deal saga on course to haunt South Africans yet again. Marred by the multi-billion rand scandal that shaped the country's politics, prompting a four-year inquiry by the largely discredited Seriti Commission, whose 2016 report found no trace of corruption in the arms deal. Among those summoned, Paul Holden. He withdrew his testimony from the commission. My subpoena said I am entitled to documents held by the commission of relevance to my testimony, and the commission refused to give me a single document during the entire time I was preparing. So we decided after... I think it was re after one of the evidence leaders, one of the employers of the commission resigned uh, in protest of the way in which the commission was conducting itself, we decided it wasn't worth us participating anymore. Alleged corruption in the arms deal amounts to almost 72 billion rand. It's more than the total planned budget for NESFAS from 2016 to 2020. Commissions are generally incredibly, incredibly long take extreme state resources um, and often end nothing happening. Um, it would thus be, in our opinion, the position that the NPA um, needs to launch investigations into the arms deal and these allegations and implicated parties need to finally be prosecuted. To your knowledge, is there a division? In an effort to connect the dots, the People's Tribunal on Economic Crime tried to probe the institutional failures to hold those in power accountable. The old route of legal advocacy, of using the court system at its various levels to hold to account governments, companies and individuals who engage in corruption and ensure that weapons of war find their way into conflicts. For if we don't do this, we will ensure that the global trade in arms will continue to make our nations more corrupt, less democratic, and perhaps most ironically, less safe. The horrific events by the apartheid government were also put on the spot. So were international banks implicated in funding crimes against humanity. During the sanctions period when it was illegal to sell weapons to the apartheid regime, Credit Bank, we believe, actively worked with the apartheid government and with Arms Corps to set up an international money laundering network um, with more than 100 front companies that we've been able to identify, almost 900 bank accounts across the world. And the bank helped to conceptualize the architecture Firstly, because they profited from it, and secondly, as we've been able to show, the very senior management of the bank, some of whom had been senior politicians in Belgium, um, were avid supporters of the apartheid system. Two decades into democracy, political corruption still remains the hardest to prosecute. We truly believed that the post-apartheid state would deliver on the remedies and reparations for victims who had brought them to power. So the target was the multinational companies, um, particularly because none of them participated in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. We handed over cases, very many cases, to the National Prosecuting Authority for them to prosecute. Because there was no way to prosecute people whom we believed had been involved in close violations of human rights, in violations of close rights. In violation, in close violation of human rights, and 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 they had applied for amnesty, they had not got amnesty. Now the question is, why has there been a scarcity of prosecutions? More questions than answers. There is no doubt that the violations of the United Nations Weapons Boycott Resolutions were either deliberately aimed at helping the apartheid state or inevitably and unarguably had that result. 
we are satisfied that those who did not expressly intend to support apartheid, or those who say they did not, are substantially guilty of this crime against humanity. The adjudicators did not comment on the arms deal report as it is still under legal review. The recommendations will be handed to authorities for further investigations as the struggle for truth continues. It's a tribute to whistleblowers and activists. Margaret Gaitlamathabe, SABC News, Johannesburg.